Nvidia has come out with the successor of the Shield Portable and this time around they are doing things a little different. We have a full-fledged Nvidia Shield tablet with a controller being sold separately. Unfortunately, neither do I own an Nvidia GPU nor do I have access to an internet connection capable of supporting streaming games. So I decided to skip out on the controller and instead check out the Nvidia Shield tablet as a standalone tablet. So if this is your first time here or in case you've forgotten, my name's Ash and you're watching c 4 Tech. Let's get started. The Nvidia Shield tablet sports a utilitarian look. Nothing flashy here. It's got a rubberized back, is 9.2mm thick and weighs in at about 375 grams. That's thicker and a good 85 grams heavier when compared to the Nexus 7 2013, my tablet of choice for a good part of the year. But Nvidia has a good reason for this extra bulk. For starters, the Nvidia Shield tablet sports dual stereo speakers to the front and in between the speakers we find the 8 inch Full HD display. We've got base ports to the sides, Nvidia has even thrown in a dedicated mini HDMI port so that your USB port remains free for you to plug in a controller or charger device when you came on your TV. And remember, the Shield tablet can even output in 4K to your TV. To enhance the tablet features, Nvidia has also thrown in Nvidia's own Direct Stylus and to top it all off, a 5200mAh non-user replaceable battery. All very good reasons to justify a bit of extra heft over what was possibly the most popular tablet of last year. Now the Tegra Shield needs this bigger battery since it's powered by one of the most powerful chips available today, the Tegra K1. The Tegra K1 houses four Cortex-A15 cores clocked at 2.2GHz each and a third generation companion core, coupled with a 192 core GPU based on the GeForce Kepler architecture and 2 gigs of RAM. Pretty impressive specs. It outperforms pretty much any tablet on the market today, that's including the other tablet being powered by the same Tegra K1 chip, the Mi Pad. This is largely due to the lower resolution on the Shield tablet though. Performance here is stellar and of course thanks to the beefy 192 core GPU, every game we threw at it ran smooth. It's also worth noting that the tablet comes with a copy of Trine 2 preloaded and has access to a host of Nvidia exclusive titles. The audio quality is also great. One of the main reasons I loved my time with the Shield tablets due to these awesome front facing stereo speakers. Audio via the headphones was pretty good too. Well, performance by itself is great, it doesn't amount to much without a decent display or the battery life to back it up and the Nvidia Shield tablet delivers on both fronts. The Full HD IPS display has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 giving it a pixel density of 283 pixels per inch. The screen is very bright and sunlight visibility is also great. It is sharp and produces natural colors, but the blacks aren't very deep, affecting contrast a bit, especially at the higher brightness levels. Talking about brightness levels, the Nvidia Shield tablet has the lowest default level that I've seen on a tablet without it being rooted. It's extremely useful, especially when using your tablet in the dark. Battery life is also pretty decent. If you aren't really into gaming and use the Nvidia Shield tablet like it did, that is just as a tablet, you should be able to easily get through a few days on a single charge with moderate usage. For example, on a looping video playback test, the Shield tablet lasted a little over 10 hours before running out of juice. And that, coupled with the fact that the standby drain is very low, makes for a great battery life. On the other hand, with intensive gaming like say a session of playing Trine 2, the battery depleted quite quickly. M more or less 3 hours is what you could expect. About par for the course for intensive gaming. Now, going back to the build, there is something that I found very annoying with the Shield tablet. The power and volume keys have almost no feedback. You don't get the clicky feeling when you press them. Picture hitting the power key on a phone with a cheap TPU case on it. That is how it feels and it takes a lot away from the tablet experience. Anyway, moving on to the cameras, the Nvidia Shield tablet has dual 5 megapixel cameras on the front and back and both of them perform decently. Good enough for the occasional social media pic and video chat. It's worth noting that while the rear camera supports Full HD video recording, the front camera only supports 720p. As far as software goes, the Nvidia Shield tablet as expected runs on Android 4.4 KitKat. Nvidia has kept things as close to stock as possible with minor changes. 
Since by this time most of us are familiar with what KitKat brings with it, let's take a look at the changes that NVIDIA brings to the table. First, we have the Direct Stylus Launcher that pops up when the stylus is removed. This gives you some stylus specific apps including NVIDIA Dabla. This supports pressure sensitivity and recognizes the surface area of the stylus touching the display. Pretty sweet. Pulling down the notification bar gets you a share option. You can record your screen from here and even broadcast it to Twitch. The auto record function keeps the last preset number of minutes recorded so that you don't have to manually set the tab tablet to record your screen. Good stuff. Nvidia has also added a full screen option, a forced immersion mode when the app doesn't support it by default, and the shield power control, battery optimization options to get the most out of your shield tablet depending on your usage. Then there is also the controller menu that lets you map buttons for your controller and so on. When connected to a display via HDMI, the shield console mode gives you two options. You could either mirror the screens or turn off the shield screen altogether and game just via the TV. Barring these minor tweaks, the rest is stock kit cat. Everything works as expected, smooth. Multitasking is great, apps open up quick without a hint of lag. So with that being said, we now get to the price. The Nvidia Shield tablets priced at $299 for the 16GB Wi-Fi only variant and $100 more for the 32GB LTE variant. That's pretty competitive and in my honest opinion worth the price even if you're not an avid gamer. Because even if you strip all the gaming features away, you're still left with a stellar $299 tablet with top of the line specs that performs great. That's just me though, what do you guys think? Would you consider forking out $299 for the Nvidia Shield tablet? If not, what do you feel Nvidia should have done different? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So anyway, if you do want to pick up a Shield tablet, you can do that from Amazon. I'll leave a direct link down below in the description. And with that, I guess we get to the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, please do stay subscribed. If you do have any video requests for me, you can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You can let me know there. I'll leave direct links to all my social, uh, social networks down below the like button in the description. So once again, thanks a lot for watching guys. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.